Hello again YouTube, my name is Hans and welcome to my channel and this episode of Darktable Insights. This is an introduction to Darktable, one of the best free tools for organizing and editing your photos. Today I'm going to show you the different ways to import your photos into Darktable. Come on, let's go! So, I'm here in uh, Linux Mint desktop. And the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, pop in my uh, SD card in my card reader. And then we get this question what we're going to do. We're going to open Darktable. So we just click OK. And Darktable starts. Now the first thing we're going to look at is up here on this pref in the preferences, on this cogwheel. We'll take a look in session options, and here are the paths where uh, images are imported. Base directory is where uh, Darktable puts everything. This uh, dollar sign and parentheses and capitals means that uh, it's a variable. So pictures folder is the variable for uh, whatever pictures folder you might have on your system. And the subdirectory naming pattern that's uh, that's how Darktable will uh, will name the uh, folder where the imported images are uh, stored. So in this case it's the year, the month, the day of the import and also a job code which is a name that you give this import. And finally the file naming pattern is how the names are how the files are uh, renamed. Because Darktable renames all the files. And year, month and day that's the date of today when uh, when the uh, import is done. And then it's a number from one and upwards, all the images, and the file extension. So uh, let's say you might want to have the date of uh, when you took the images instead. Then you can change this year, month and date to say exif year, exif month and exif date. Just type in exif and then underscore exif year and do the same with month and day then you get uh, those dates instead and if you want to know which which variables are uh, available then you can go over here to uh, to the uh, export module and just hover your mouse over the export path and there you get a list of everything you can use all of these are available also in the preferences. So I like to keep this as default. Just press close and then we go to import from camera. Here we get all the images. And we give the folder a name. Let's call it uh, test import select the first image and click control A to select all and import and here they come 32 images so that's one way of importing but let's say you use some other software to copy the, copy the files from your SD card onto your computer you might use uh, file manager, you might use uh, photo mechanics or something else. Then what you want to do is to import a folder. Then you just click folder here. And you choose a folder on your system. Pick in the pictures folder and we have dark table and let's say this test folder. 
Select that and open. And there's the test folder. Now we'll go back to his recently used collections. So we can go back to uh, the test import that we did from our camera. Now we can have a quick look through our images. Just uh, select the first image and press Z on your keyboard. That gives a preview of the uh, of the JPEG that's uh, embedded into the uh, RAW file. So it's quite quick. And then you can use your arrow keys to move between the images. So say so this one is nothing. We'll get rid of that. Press R. Then this one might be a good one to edit. I'll give that two stars. Press two. You can see we have now two stars up here. And also, this without me in the image could be rejected because we don't want them. And so on. Also, if you want to uh, check the focus, you can do that quickly. Again, select an image, press Ctrl and Z. Then you get these squares in the image. And those squares indicate that uh, there is an area which is in focus. So if you go through the images, you see that they are in focus. And if these squares are blue, then uh, the focus isn't that good. It's almost in focus, but not completely. And if it's completely out of focus, then there's nothing. So that, that's a quick way of checking that. Next thing you want to do when you have imported might be to tag your images. So they're easier, easier to search. And you go over here to tagging. And we can... To do it fast, we can take several images at once. Let's say we take all of these and we place our cursor in the field and we start typing our tags. So it's uh, sunset, it's water, it's forest, and so on. And we have under here we have all the all the available tags that we have used before. And on the top here is uh, the tags that are in the in these images. This on the top here, dark table format CR2, that's something that uh, dark table applies automatically. It uh, just says that it's edited in dark table and the format is CR2, which is Canon's RAW format. So also what you can do is to go in this list if you like to. You can find a, uh, find a tag, you can double click it, and then it appears up here. Or you can just select it and click attach here. Also if you regret or don't want it after all, you can double click it up here and it disappears. Or you can click it and detach. Also we have a metadata editor where you can apply a title, description and copyright and stuff like that. So uh, when I import images I automatically apply creator and public creator and rights so you can see if I hover over the images there's my name as creator and all rights reserved. And also we can give them a title. That's better to do with one image at a time maybe. Get a title. Uh, quiet town vertical. Uh, description.
and then apply. Then when you hover over this, you can see it's applied. Now collect images module. If we reset this, we get all of our collections. Then in this area we have all our images. Remember these from the first episodes maybe. And these are the ones we imported now. So if I go to this demo import, that's the old one, double click it, and we have only these. And we can uh, say we can search by tags. So we click up here and we choose tag. Then we can type in a tag here. Let's say uh, sunset, enter. All images with the sunset tag appears up here. And down here we have the recently used collections, which is the last collections we've had. So now we don't have that many. So I just repeat each other. We go back to test import. So we can also uh, filter the images that we have here. We can view, here we have view all. We can set that to uh, reject it only. These are the ones we rejected. And we can filter by stars. So one star or more. Or this. I gave two stars to an image or two. Yeah, that's what that was only this one. Go back to one star. We can also sort them by file name, time, rating, and so on. This is a view one star or more. We can change this to equal. These are only the ones with one star. These are the ones with one star or less. So we have also the rejected ones. Should have. No, not rejected ones, but one star or zero stars. We don't have any with zero. And these are all that don't have one star. I have two. Seems like reje rejects don't uh, don't apply here. But we'll go back to the default. If you click this star up here. Then you get overlays that shows the stars. Like this one has two stars, and if we uh, if we show all, you also get the rejected ones. They call a red cross, and we can say we have this and this and this. We give them a color label. We got the color labels up here. Also we can see if uh, anything is done to an image. Now we haven't done anything to any of these, but uh, say we edit this one. Just adjust the white balance a bit. Warm it up. Give it a bit of a tint. And then reduce the exposure. Like this, and go back to light table. You can see this little symbol up here. That indicates that something has been uh, done to it. And you get a tooltip that says what has been done. Exposure, white balance, base curve sharpening and orientation. So that's a quick way of seeing what you've done and if anything. That's all for today. Next time we'll take a look at the complete edit again. Repeating what we learned so far and maybe learning something new. If you like what I'm doing, then please hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss an episode. I'd also be very happy if you check out my other outlets online. All links are in the description, down here. 
And if there's anything about Darktable you'd like me to talk about, then please let me know in the comments. See you next week. Thank you.